refer to designer jeans, designer jackets. We're going to make designer documents because, hey, we can because we come to business communications and we know a lot about this kind of stuff. We want to go through and make certain the design of the document is clear and concise with all the detail you'd expect in something that's made in a fine crafted piece of garment by the time they're all done. Make certain it's designer ready and it looks sharp and positive. Go through, make use of the white space. When you sit down and have a document, you have words and they take up space, but you also have parts of the paper that are not filled. We call that the white space. White space is not bad. Don't try to fill it up with a bunch of jargon. Sometimes you make a really solid point to it. In your, your process, you want to make it clear by adding headings. Headings really do add because of the fact that a lot of times, if you're going through a multi-page document, let me give you a secret. People don't read them. That being said, what they do read is the headings. If you pick up a report, the report's 17 pages long, the very first thing that happens, they look at the cover. Your cover should always be sharp and crisp. And by the way, in this class, I, I like covers. I like covers with the name of the class, the students that are involved in the process, their name on it. I like the, my name on there and the professor is directed to me. Keep it, but it's almost all white paper, except for the fact it makes you look outstandingly intelligent, the fact you included that. Then you go through, let's say it's a 17 page document, you're scanning through, the first thing you're gonna read is the cover. Second thing is what they call the executive summary, which is a one page document that tells you exactly what's gonna be in the rest of the 17 pages. And then they go through, typically they'll read the first one, two or three pages. And then most people, they start looking for the pretty pictures. I'm serious. This is how the brain is wired or Americans are wired, at least in the process. And then you sit down, and you look at the headings on it, and you may go through and, and choose heading, heading, heading. And you're not looking at the headings, you're looking at what the heading says, but you know the heading is descriptive of the topic behind it. And then people pick out different things they want to read inside the 17-page report. I hate to tell you this, those 17 pages if you get them to read four out of the 17, you're probably doing really well in the process because they're looking for specific things that affect them directly. Headings are a big thing. Bulleted or numbered lists are really good and re we use them very differently. Bullets sit down and they say, bang, here's an idea. Bang, here's an idea. Bang, here's an idea. Let, let me just tell you a story. One of the very best cover letters for resume I ever saw had bullet points in it. That being said, in higher education, we do everything a little bit differently. We pay attention to words, words, words. Did you know that sometimes there's stories about professors stand at the top of the staircase with papers and they fling all the papers down the staircase and those that fall to the lowest step, they're the ones that get the A and, and those that are lighter by weight because in fact, they can't make it down there. So they get different Bs, Cs and Ds and so on. I don't know if the story is true. That's what I heard when I was going to college. Make certain it's not true for you in the process. But, but in the process of numbered things on bullets, people pay attention to the fact that there's bullet points on there because you've decided to draw attention to that thing there. On that cover letter, what that guy did is he submitted it. He is one of 40 applicants. Nobody knew who the different applicants were, but they kind of knew some of them. And this guy went through, he put five bullet points on the cover letter and nobody recalled the other 39 people, but they called that guy the bullet point guy because he stood out because people remembered that of the top five things that they remembered one or two of the bullet points. Bullet points help. Numbered lists actually give you things that are in a specific order you want the center the reader to know. Use the short sentences. Remember what the rule is. If it's an eight word sentence, people remember it. If it's 15, then you only have 90% retention and it keeps on dropping, dropping, dropping until by the time you're all done. Somebody, if you got a 25 word sentence, nobody remembers anything on it. Short sentences, write short paragraphs. If you go past four sentences, sometimes people don't want to read the whole thing in the process. Set effective margins and establish white space as you go through. A margin is normally about one to one and a half inches on it. And you'll see there's a way to set margins. Here's a screenshot as to how to go about setting them. But for the most part, your computer is going to already have a margin already preset in the process. About one to one and a half inches you go through. 
we do a thing called rank and write. You can sit down there and click on the tab. If you look at the screen over here, the part that's blue on the second bar there, okay, that's showing is called ragged right. That means down the left-hand side of the paper, it's all straight and all the lines start at exactly the same point. You don't do anything over here. And, and the part over here is a little bit ragged in the process. You can sit down and do what they call full justification. So you have it justified here. So it's a straight line and on the right, except you know what? That leads to very boring writing. Some textbooks do that, which is why textbooks have a bad name. Sometimes it's bad writing, sometimes it's bad formatting. For this class, I'm expecting you to always submit everything with a ragged right. And it's called left justified, ragged right in the process. And that way you have the different thing. If you see the slide over here, the yellow print, you'll see that provide at the end, the one line has an E over there. And then the next line is improve. And the next line is readability. So it goes in, out in the process. You want that to happen because you want the eye to sit down there and, and have things to go through and focus on that it makes it much easier to read as you go through. Here's an example of, of a ragged right corner. The left-hand side is all straight. The ragged right is over there. Always use the ragged right. It really improves the readability of the letter because of the fact that you have some changes on every single line you go through. You also want to sit down there and pay attention on the aspect of, of the serif, the sans serif or with, without serif. In other words, the tails on it, you'll see on the left-hand side. That heading there is an aerial. Aerial sits on there. It's a very harsh font. You can see the A, B, C. They're not forgiving at all. They command you to look at them in the process. On the right-hand side of the syrup, okay, where they have tails on them, okay, they have small features at the end of the stroke. It's more pleasing to the eye. It makes your eyes soften as you go through and read it. Therefore, you want to have a sans serif, something without tails, to be in your headings. You want that harsh type there. And then especially, sometimes you either want to center it or have it on the left-hand side. But if you have it on the left-hand side, you can sit down and pick up the head and pretty easily. When you have those tails on it, that makes for great text in the process. On all the papers I write, I try to keep my headings all in sans serif, something without tails. I use either uh, Arial or I use Calibri typically. And then on the serif where they have the tails in them, I either use Times New Roman, when, especially when I'm using Arial, or I, or I use uh, Cambria when I'm using Calibri in the process. So, so think about how you want it to look in the process because we're talking about you becoming a designer of document. Use tails for text and a harsh font for headers. And here's a couple other things. Now, by the, and it's interesting, sometimes industry standards are different. Screenplays are still written in courier. If you look at the word courier, you'll see it's kind of a, an awkward font. It's based upon the old fashioned typewriter as you go through. And each letter occupies exactly the same space. If you look above on Cambria, you'll see that the letters don't occupy exactly the same space. Look, look at Cambria. On Cambria, you'll see that they're together. You'll see the B, R, I, A. The, the I occupies a fraction of the amount of space of the A or the R, and that's because they're trying to make it more readable in the process. You'll see the Calibri is almost shocking. It draws your eye to an aerial. They, they're shocking as well in the process. So fonts to use, Here's some examples. You can mix it up in the process if you go through. So, so think about the different things. Here's a, a large number of examples of, of, of typefaces for different purposes, all purpose sans serif. Okay, and then the serif as you go through as to what you want to have in the process. You'll see some of these used a lot of times in publications. Uh, comic sans is kind of a light fun, airy uh, font to use. I would never put that into a regular business paper in, in, or especially for this class, but in the business report as you go through and some of the others as you go through. So you'll see different ones that come out in the process as to what they use. Generally, okay, your computers, a lot of the things, the, the computer companies, they set your computer up to be at 11 point. 
I recommend you actually kick it up to 12 point because of the fact if you're dealing with people that are older or have vision issues, the 12 point is actually physically bigger and an 11 or a 10 point is smaller. A lot of your spreadsheets are 10 point font and or less, sometimes they're eight point font and sometimes you need to get a magnifying glass out to go through and see them. Um, especially if to consider capitalization catches the eye. By the way, I, I know that you already know this, Never sit down and send a message in all caps because people think you're yelling at them because you are, because people that do that don't think about what they're saying, or maybe they do and they're just rude in the process. There's small caps out there. Boldface is really good to use. Italics, especially for different references and underline as you go through the process. Avoid having too much special effects. It's almost like a matter of a seesaw. You don't want to get people seasick and have them throwing up because they read your paper. It makes them ill in the process. Don't have a large number of special effects, especially on presentations that really sits down with things flying in and out, too many colors. It can be really irritating. The margins, centering fonts can be irritating because you're drawing the eye back and forth. Sometimes you want that, but sometimes you don't. If you keep on moving things in the middle, especially like a paragraph with, with three or four lines and it's all centered, it's kind of sloppy looking in the process. It makes you look unprofessional. Don't be afraid of leaving white space in your memos as you go through. Uh, people like to have lists and numbers. They like it. If you look over here in the left, Following these steps is turning to business, write a business plan, locate venture capital, prepare a feasibility study. Gee, you do a feasibility study first before you do that? No, because the directions say, one, write a business plan, two, locate venture capital. So that it really is very concise when you add numbers to it. Now look over to the right. Consider the following, environmental regulations, employee benefit plans, licensing, by using bullet points, you're saying all three of these things are equal and they don't supersede the other one in the process that you should look at. So people like them. If you put too many, I would never recommend you turn something in with numbered points, numbered points on a, on a paper and then numbering later on. You use one, two, three, and then A, B, C. That really irritates the reader and they get frustrated in the process. Consider the following of issues there as, as well. So, so making items parallel in the process, that really is a big deal. Look over here between the two. The social media goals, we're striving to create brand awareness. Another goal is to enhance public relations, a community of advocates. You can sit down there and make them smaller. Now look at this. You got bullet points, but they occupy one line each. Now, that really helps a lot because of the fact that now you're not trying to memorize this. I have to tell you, reading this stuff on the left-hand side, I don't have a retention of what was said because it really just is a bunch of babble again and flabby words. On the right-hand side, create brand awareness. That can stick. It's three words. Remember I said we like things in three? Enhance public relations. Build a community of advocates. I would sit down and think, community of advocates? Okay. Drive sales and create leads. That on the parallel side, by using less words, the bullet points, you don't have to write an entire sentence for bullet points in the process. Add headings to enhance comprehension. There's different kinds of headings as you go through. You want to sit down and look at, if you look here in the process, you see the headings over here, attracting applicants. Now you have, we must analyze where and how we advertise your applicants, specifically online. Okay, you got the idea, attracting applicants, so now you're tracking everything down. And by the way, you see they're all two words and you can actually add a period to them. And the period is not indicative of a sentence, it's indicative of the final part of the thought being done. So you have different things, have short headings. Designer documents provide a fashionable document with a bit of artistry of a word professional. Craft your work so people can see what you communicate and take time and watch the detail the same as an artist on a piece of campus.